desire to hear more and more of you. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the title of this message, and the Lord has really been putting some things on my heart about getting rid of, of uh, Benson's joining us, and uh, but getting rid of toxins. And But I'm going to take it a little bit further and not just toxins in our body, but toxins in our, in our spirit man and in our soulish realm, uh, because we're made up of three parts, uh, spirit, soul, and body. And our spirit, so we have a spirit, and when we accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, uh, we... Uh, we invite him to come into our lives and the Holy Spirit comes in to our human spirit. And so we have a human spirit, a big, if you can um, um, visualize a big round ball, and then you have the Holy Spirit that comes in and, and, and is in your human spirit. And he works with us, each individual, he works with us, bringing us into maturity and filling up that big ball. Uh, the Holy Spirit fills up that, that human spirit. And so that everything that we do, everything that we say is pleasing to the Lord. And I'm going to start in Matthew uh, chapter 21 where Jesus uh, comes into the temple. And when he comes into the temple, he finds things that are displeasing to him. Now, this is, this is a picture literally of the, of, the, of the temple of God and the, or the sanctuary. And he says here, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of those that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold the doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, I know that that was a literal thing that happened, an actual thing that happened that Jesus went in and he threw over the tables. He threw the people out that were buying and selling and that what they weren't supposed to be doing. And he corrected them. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And, and so this is one time when you see just um, the righteous anger of God rise up in, in Jesus uh, because his father's house was being corrupted, corrupted. Now I want you to think about that word corrupt. It means uh, that uh, things are spoiled. Uh, things are made rotten. Um, you know, uh, you know, a corrupt um, business is doing things uh, illegal and so are le illegally. And, and so when you think about ridding the toxins in, in our lives, I want us to consider that that, that toxic um, toxins that are in our body is like corruption in, in our body. And, 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 you know, the word of God wants to come in, Jesus wants to come in and overthrow the tables and, and cast out all of those things that are not pleasing unto him that are corrupting his temple. And, and so, and he says, you've made it a den of thieves, which is, which is um, illegal uh, activity going on. And I believe that there's some illegal activity going on in, in the, some spirits of, of some of the people and their soulless realm and their bodies. And all of that, he says, get rid of. Get rid of, you know, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 2, and uh, this is a, a scripture. I love Timothy uh, because I believe that Timothy is a picture of, of the believer, and Paul was writing to Timothy, and, 
And he says in Timothy 2.22. Um, okay, well, let's go. Okay, this is talking about the vessels. If we go back to 20, it says in a great house, there are vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If, if a person therefore purge himself, now that's what I'm talking about, getting rid, getting rid of the toxins, but purge himself uh, from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, set apart, and meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. See, God is preparing every one of us. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has a destiny. Uh, we, we minister on that time and time again because Brother Fred wakes up with purpose. And he believes in bringing people and, and, and showing them uh, the way to, to fulfill their purpose and to reach their destination. Hallelujah. It says in verse 22 is where I want to get to. Paul tells Timothy, flee from youthful lust, but follow these things. So these things right here will help us to get rid of the toxins in our spirit, our soul, and our body. Hey, Ruth. I think that's Ruth. Yes, it is. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Benson. Um, it's wonderful to have y'all with us. We're talking about getting rid of toxins uh, tonight and in our spirit and in our soul and in our body because we're made up of those three parts. And in Timothy, Paul is telling him, flee those youthful lusts, but follow after these things. Follow after righteousness. Follow after faith. Follow after love follow after peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So the first thing I want you to, to remember about getting rid of any toxins is that we have to have a pure heart. We have to have purity in our heart. What does that mean? That means no unforgiveness. That means no a bitterness that means no anger uh, all of the the negative emotions and also those emotions that actually take root for instance bitterness is a uh, a root it calls it a root in the word of god and it is and and i have seen bitterness and it is a vine that is very dangerous and it surrounds people's uh, inward parts. Uh, I've seen vines uh, that have have taken livers and made them, um, you know, the people were yellow, uh, and their their skin were, was yellow because of the of their livers being diseased. And so I have seen, uh, and when you got right down to what was going on with them, it was that you know they had bitterness, and so bitterness will grow up as as a as a vine in a, in a root and will endanger uh, that individual. And so, so we're to follow after those, those things, righteousness, faith, love, peace, and we're to do it out of a pure heart. And so tonight we're going to examine ourselves to see whether or not, number one, that we be in the faith, and number two, are we following after love have we cleaned out our heart and made it pure before the Lord? You know, let's um, uh, in Psalms 24, uh, verse three and four, it says, who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Remember, we're all going up the mountain. We all have climbing to do and we're all wanting more of the Lord and we're wanting to be better people and we're wanting to uh, fulfill uh, the will of the Lord in our lives, where we want to be um, believers uh, that that are pleasing unto the Lord, and so as we go up the uh, as we go up the mountain, it says, "Who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord?" And then the very next verse it says, "Those with clean hands 
and a pure heart. And so a person is not going to climb very fast or very far if there's toxins that are corrupting uh, their, their spirit. Uh, and so remember the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is not going to force something on you. The Holy Spirit doesn't force the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't even force salvation on anyone. They will. The Holy Spirit gently leads us and each one of us uh, into salvation and into a deeper walk with the Lord. And, and But he's a gentleman and he's not going to push us and he's not going to drive us. And that's what the enemy does. That's what the devil does. He tries to drive you and push you until you're so tired, you can't, um, you can't think straight, you can't uh, do what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, and so uh, we, we need to get rid of all of this garbage uh, that we might have collected uh, over time. And so the spirit man is that pure heart. And how do we get there? How do we get a pure heart? And that's in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. And it says, if we repent, repentance is so, it's a gift. We have the, the, the gift of repentance is given to us. And, um, and every time we fall short, that, that's what sin is. That's what sin is, is falling short of the mark. And, and so we, we repent. And in verse 19, Acts 3, 19, it says, repent ye therefore and be converted or changed. That word converted there means changed. You know, and I, I want to change. You know, God never changes, but George is changing. Joy is changing. Grace is changing. Benson is changing. Benson is changing a lot. And Ruth is changing. Freddie is changing. Sarah is changing. I'm changing. Hallelujah. But God never changes. And it says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Hallelujah. Every time we repent of something that we've said or something that we've done, it's like a blank slate. It's like an empty page. Hallelujah. It's, it's under the blood. Oh, and praise the name of Jesus. I want to share something that the Lord uh, shared with me as I was responding uh, to someone in Peru today. And uh, she had had COVID. Her mother had COVID. And I was, I was typing as fast as I could. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, COVID, now listen to this, cannot live in my blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. COVID cannot live in the blood of Jesus. And if you have the blood of Jesus over you, then COVID cannot live. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Benson. <laughs> it's great to see you. And so let's go on here. It's going to be blotted out. Every time we repent, anything that we've done um, and we've repented of, then that, that's a blank slate right there. It, it's all cleaned off. Hallelujah. And it's under the blood. And it says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Every time we repent, then that brings us a little higher up the mountain into the presence of God. And it causes us to be refreshed. I speak a refreshing to come to every one of us in this Hallelujah. session tonight. Refreshed. Refreshed. Full of energy. Hallelujah. When you're refreshed, then you, you feel like you can run through a troop and jump over a wall. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And so, are you refreshed? I'm refreshed. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, I started out with the, with the Spirit because the Lord looks upon our heart. And he sees that if there's anything there 
that needs to be thrown out, bagged up and thrown out in the in the garbage. Uh, you know, if there's any any person you need to forgive, if there's any um, thing that has been said to you, uh, if there's been any persecution against you, uh, then you need to lay all of that aside and 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 clean it out. And and repentance is one way to, to clean it out. But there's other there's another way. Could, could I just say sure. something about about this? For the last uh, several months, I have been uh, dealing with uh, issues in my life, uh, curses, uh, the curses of of my ancestors, and how those things have come down and affected me and affected my children, and. Uh, I've, I've repented of, of things that my ancestors did, my uh, father, my grandfather. Uh, there, were, there was a lot of bitterness and a lot of unforgiveness in their lives. And, and uh, they had uh, uh, unforgiveness and, and bitterness towards their siblings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I asked for the blood of Jesus to be over my life and over uh, my children and grandchildren. Uh, so that those curses wouldn't continue to come down. Uh, one thing in particular was uh, my uh, uh, great great uncles, uh, they all fought over an inheritance. My uh, grandfather and his uh, brothers all fought over an inheritance. My father and his uh, uh, siblings uh, all fought over an inheritance. And, none, and the inheritance really wasn't even anything uh, worth fighting over anyway, but it they had bitterness and I didn't want that to come down over me. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I repented, I, I pleaded the blood of Jesus over uh, different things and, and I, anything that the Lord had shown me over the last, uh, uh, for a period of several months, the things that I did or the things that my uh, parents or grandparents or great grandparents uh, did that was, uh, un not pleasing to God, I, I asked the Holy Spirit to show me those things, and he, he cleansed me from a lot of, of things, and also my times when I've had a broken heart, and when people have done mm -hmm. things to me, or said things to me, or, or mistreated me, then I realized I, I had uh, 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 trauma over different situations, uh, trauma of being in uh, automobile accidents, and uh, different kinds, of, even when I was a little boy, being in some uh, uh, automobile accidents. And I realized I had uh, trauma and that I, I had uh, places in my heart that were broken. And, and I, I believe that all of those things had to be dealt with. And like I said, I, I've spent a lot of time in prayer over uh, maybe even a couple of years, just uh, cleansing out. Uh, Sherry's talking about cleansing out things and, right. and, uh, and cleansing out things, uh, not that I did, uh, but maybe some of the things I did, but a lot of it was the things uh, that the Holy Spirit would show me about my relatives and, and the things that they did, the sins. I, I mean, they sinned. Uh, maybe your relatives didn't sin, but my, my relatives mm -hmm. did, had plenty of sin. And uh, I pleaded the blood over those things. And just like Sherry was saying today, COVID cannot live in the blood of Jesus. And so as we continue to uh, bring <laughs> issues before the Lord, uh, and, and they begin to be washed out and How cleansed really, yeah. and healed uh, by the blood of Jesus. And the mm -hmm. traumas that I experienced over my life, uh, different things and uh, how I was mistreated or uh, accidents that I was in or, or different kinds of things. And uh, any time that those things would come to my mind, I realized I had a broken heart. There was a place in my heart that had been traumatized by those things. And so anything the Holy Spirit brought to me over, uh, let's say a couple of years, I, I repented if I needed to repent. I, I pleaded the blood if I needed to, uh, to get all of that out. And what's been amazing to me is that in recent times, uh, the Holy Spirit hasn't gone down that uh, avenue anymore, down that pathway. And, and I believe that a lot of those things have been resolved. And uh, I continue to see myself in a different, uh, in a different light. 
uh, because the Holy Spirit dealt with me uh, over a lot of issues. And I had to repent of a lot of things, mm -hmm. which uh, I might, might have even thought I had taken care of years ago, but they weren't, uh, there wasn't a healing. Uh, and I needed healing in my life because Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And when I realized I was one of those people he came to heal, then I asked him to help me in those areas. And so uh, I, I've spent a lot of time in doing that. And, and, and I believe that I'm a different person today than I was even two years ago mm -hmm. because I was carrying a lot of baggage. Uh, and some of the things I thought I had dealt with, some of them I hadn't. And uh, uh, some of the things I had been hurt, I had, uh, my heart was hurt. Uh, I needed healing. And so that's why Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And so what Sherry's talking about today mm -hmm. is that we need to deal with these issues, get them out on the surface. And uh, if the enemy accused me of something, then I would quickly say, I, I repent. Uh, yes, that was right. I did. I sinned. I, mm -hmm. I have sinned or I, I, I had the wrong thoughts. Sometimes it was just the wrong thoughts, but the Holy Spirit would show me. And so if the enemy uh, showed me I had done something wrong, I would repent. Or even if the Holy Spirit showed me uh, something I had done wrong or, or, or missed the mark, because that's what sin is. It just simply missed the mark. And it's hard to catch the mark and hit the mark every time if you're an archer. And that's the way, our, that's the way we're viewed there. Uh, mm -hmm. like we are an archer and we have to hit the mark every time. And if we, we miss it sometimes and, and, and I have missed it sometimes, but I want all of that cleansed out of my life so that I can go forward with the Lord mm -hmm. well, because I don't want anything standing between me and the Lord or keeping me from fulfilling what he wants mm -hmm. me to fulfill uh, on this earth so mm -hmm. this is not just a one-time thing and and just a quick prayer you say well just cleanse me of everything mm -hmm. I, i've spent i've spent a lot of time in prayer uh, for months and months uh but i'm at a different point today than i was two years ago because the holy spirit has healed my heart in a lot of things one of the things that i know uh that that was healed is if I had a thought that kept coming up and it was uh, uh, like something that happened to me when I was young and it hurt me and I was, uh, and I was hurt. And, but that particular issue just kept coming up over and over again as a thought. And I realized, oh, I haven't received my healing uh, over that situation yet. It's still there. It's a thought that is haunting my life. Uh, and I need to deal with it. I need to get it under the blood and let the Holy Spirit heal me from that trauma. And so th this is a process, an ongoing process for the rest of your life that you, you need healing in every part of your heart. Anything that has hurt you over time needs to heal. That Jesus came to heal us. Hallelujah. Let me say this and then... This is something that you might want to think about and, and ask the Holy Spirit uh, to, to tell you uh, what the Lord thinks. But what he has revealed to me is that every sickness starts in the human spirit. And just, just think about that right now. And because the enemy can come to us, but we have... We have uh, a will of our own, and so we can uh, tell the enemy to, you know, to get lost, or or we can entertain uh, what he's telling us. Uh, but that is inside there, and that's Brother Fred is saying. That's why it's so important to get rid of those toxic things that might be in your spirit, man so that healing can can come. Healing can come to you if, if you have arthritis or diabetes or heart disease or um, rheumatoid arthritis, any, any headaches, migraine headaches, anything that because it originates uh, in that in your in your heart. 
And so, okay, um, you think about that while we go on here. Um, in Ephesians chapter five, there's another way of getting rid of the toxins. You know, we said repentance was one way and going to the mountain of the Lord is, is another way and being in the presence of God. But also uh, in Ephesians five, and I'm going to start in 25. Now, uh, this is not a, a marriage uh, seminar, so uh, which we, we do those. Uh, but um, this is, and I'm going to start here. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Hallelujah. Look at that. So we can use the word of God to help us cleanse out any garbage that we have. It would be, it said, and cleansed it with the washing of the water of the word. So the word of God, the scriptures are water. And the human body is made up of 90% water. And many people are dehydrated. Did you know that some cancers start because of dehydration? Especially lung cancer. And, and so, I mean, I mean, research, medical research has proven that there are some cancers that are caused because that person was dehydrated. So we need to drink lots of water. And, and Brother Fred also has a testimony about uh, he has just uh, been uh, listening uh, to uh, an audio book uh, because he wants to um, lower his blood pressure without having to be on any type of medication. And so you want to share? Well, well the first thing that I studied in the book that I bought uh, was that we need to drink more water. <laughs> if we uh, uh, drink more water, uh, then we can lower the risk of uh, heart disease and stroke by 50%. Hmm. If we switch from other drinks and drink water and drink good water, pure water, uh, then we can lower our risk of heart disease and um, strokes, and that, uh, that's very important. Uh, and I, I know that um, a year ago that, that I wasn't drinking enough water and the Holy Spirit told me to start mm -hmm. drinking more water. So I started drinking more water, but I, I still drink tea, I still like tea, but, but this was a very interesting research study that I, I looked at today. And that was regardless of what your other drinks are, if you focus on water and have adequate water, uh, then you reduce your risk of uh, stroke and heart disease by 50%. Oh, yeah. And that, that, that convinced me I'm going to drink more water yes. and less tea. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 27, it says that he might, or who's that? Jesus might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, I'll get to the, the scriptures that you're thinking that, that I'm going to. Uh, you're already ahead of me a little bit. Uh, in your in your in your thinking, uh, but I will get there. And uh, but he is saying he's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back with uh, for um, believers that are full of faith, that are full of righteousness, that have no spot, no blemish, nothing that not a lot of garbage that they're carrying around. You know there were. There were two jobs as I was growing up um, that I had to do. And both of those jobs I did not want to do. One was to carry out the garbage. 
I hated that. And the second thing was to go and feed the pigs. We, we lived um, next to a, a man who had pigs and and so he paid me a little bit of money each week if I would go and feed the pigs every night. And I literally despised feeding the pigs because pigs are very, very mean. They push the other pigs aside because uh, they are very selfish. Uh, they have a selfish attitude. They have a mean attitude. And I didn't like that. I didn't like getting rid of the garbage and I didn't like feeding the pigs. And, and so the, why am I saying those things? Is because some people like to just carry around their garbage. They just wanna carry it around. They don't wanna take it out. And, and so, and that's the way some believers are, uh, that they wanna just hang on to uh, unforgiveness. They wanna hang on to bitterness. They wanna hang on uh, to, uh, all the, the, the bad thoughts they've been having, uh, they want to um, just hang on to those things instead of getting rid of them. And so we need to wash ourselves with the water of the word. If, you're, if, you're, if there's a situation about forgiveness, then get into the scriptures. Get into your uh, concordance and, 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 and write down those scriptures about forgiveness and go over those scriptures. Read them out loud to yourself because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And so just get those scriptures. Well, what if uh, there's a financial issue uh, in your life and your family? Then get into the word of God about prosperity, about giving, about the Lord uh, giving you the power to get wealth, you know, get into those scriptures and begin to, to read them and, and read them out loud to yourself. You know, that's what we did when we began to learn about healing because we came out of a denomination that uh, they would have this long list on Wednesday nights. Well, you know, this person is sick and that person's in the hospital. And, and, and so we're, we're just going to, uh, we're just going to pray and, and bless them. And there was nothing ever said about, um, about healing, about the power of God to heal today. And we, we had to learn that. We had to uh, find the scriptures uh, in the word of God because our daughter was dying. At 14 months old, they said she has no immunity system. She's going to die unless you put her in a sterilized bubble like they have in, in, in Texas uh, at Anderson, I believe, uh, hospital, they, she's going to die. And so that, that caused us to, to get into the word of God and to begin to, to study it because that's what we needed in our life. And so if there's a, an area in your life, um, what about hope? What about encouragement? Uh, what about uh, issues uh, with marriage, um, issues with other people? Uh, just uh, this word of God right here is a guidebook to life. It has every answer to every question that you will ever have. And all you have to do is find it in the word. So let's, you know, wash ourselves. Okay. And, and that. What Sherry means by that is as we're studying these things, that is washing ourselves well, that's good. with that's the good. word of God. As yeah. we're studying it, we're meditating on it during the day. We're thinking about those scriptures. We're asking the Lord about the scriptures, about the things that we need in our life. Uh, then that begins to wash us and wash away all the doubt and unbelief in that area so that our pure faith can come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move on to the second area. The second part of us is our soul. You see, the body follows suit. Well, whatever the spirit and the soul decide, that's what the body does. Are you, are you, are, do you comprehend that? Uh, <laughs> if if the, the spirit and the soul said, we're going to follow the word of God, the body has no choice but to follow the word of God. But if an individual says, oh, you know, I have, you know, I don't know about that. 
I don't know if, if God heals today. I don't know about miracles. I don't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, then, then the soul, that's how you think. And what happens? The body just follows along. Hallelujah. So the soul is the second one. Now I'm going to Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Now the soulish realm is our feelings, our emotions, our attitude. And really, um, a lot of times uh, will lead us in the wrong direction. But in Philippians 4, 8, how do we detox? How do we detox our mind, our soul, our emotions, our feelings, our attitude? And, if, and here it says in verse 7 and 8, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, through the word. Again, we go back to the word, if, and, and it's going to keep us in peace. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, he's talking to all of us tonight. Whatsoever things are true, think on those things. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any power, if there be any uh, virtue, if there be any power, if there be any praise, think on these things. <coughs> That's what keeps your mind free from garbage. <laughs> Excuse me. The the uh, TV and the uh, <coughs> news they're all going to give you things to think about and thoughts. And, and so if we let our mind go around and around and think about what all is <coughs> going on in the world, what all is going on in the political arena, then we're not doing what these scriptures say. These scriptures say, think on the things of the Lord. Think on things that are pure and true and holy. And what, what the news tells you is a bad report uh, over and over. There, there's, there is basically no news in the world except bad reports. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if we begin to meditate on those things and we begin to ponder those things, what, what the news is saying, what the entertainment world is saying uh, to you, what, what uh, all is going on in the world and then we get fearful because we're thinking about those things. But when we begin to think about Jesus, that brings stability into our thinking and, and it cleanses us of all of the, all of the garbage yeah. that we're hearing mm -hmm. uh, from TV and, and from uh, news and, and, and from the movies yeah. and, all, commercials. And, and all of those things. Uh, we've got to keep ourselves pure and cleansed uh, from everything that the world is trying to program you. The, uh, the world tries to program you into thinking what they, their agenda and following their agenda. Uh, and so that you're uh, on board with them and doing what the world wants you to do. Mm -hmm. But you have a way out. And Hallelujah. that is to think on things that are pure. Think yeah. on the word of God. God. And that washes you and that washes your mind and washes your being by the word of God. Amen. You know, in Joshua, he told Joshua, meditate on, on, on the word day and night. And it's going to make your way prosperous if you, if, you think on, if you think on the word. And Brother Fred always says, when I think on Jesus, he makes me happy. And that leads me into my next point. And that is sometimes we have to break off soul soul ties that are toxic that are toxic to our life and how do you know whether or not a um a relationship is toxic number one is how do you feel after being with that individual do you feel encouraged do you feel hopeful uh do you feel um like you're stronger than you were before, then, then that is from the Lord. That's a relationship 
that's from the Lord. But some people have soul ties. Now, what is that? It means that they're in their soulish realm. Their feelings, their emotions are all tied up with that other individual. And I have seen that in, and we do marriage um, seminars. And there are times when, when individuals come to us for us to pray over their relationships. And, and we can tell right away uh, whether or not this relationship is a soul tie or if it's a divine relationship, if it's from the Lord. And it's all in that soulish area. And so if you, um, if there's a, a, a person that you uh, communicate with and they, it, you know, they iron sharpeneth iron and they, they give you encouragement and you talk about the Lord and you might pray together, you know, all of that uh, builds up your, your soul area and helps you to get rid of uh, unnecessary things in your life. Because Sherry and I have counseled with a lot of people over a lot of years, we have found some people just want to tell all of their bad reports and what all is going on in their life. And it's like they're wanting to dump all of their garbage in your lap. And then mm -hmm. after they go, dump all of their garbage, and I'm talking about all of the words they tell you about all of the sad stories and the difficult situations they're in, uh, then they go and, and they've released all of that. Right, and so they, they go feel out good. And they feel good. But, but <laughs> if you've taken all of that in and you get all anxious about what the stories that they've told you, then you're the ones burdened down. You're burdened down by by mm -hmm. all of the garbage that they're pouring out uh, on you, the, the things that are going on in their life, and they just need somebody uh, to tell that to, and then that frees them up, and they can go back in, and live in the garbage and in the pig pen, and yet they have left you with a burden if you're thinking about all of the things they're doing, and so this is not the kind of relationship that you need. Somebody that is living out all of the bad things that are going on in the in their life and they're pouring it on you and wanting you to think about all of those things and then free them up because they've been able to share them with somebody mm -hmm. be cautious about who you listen to uh, make sure that they're of god and that it's lifting you up and not pushing you down right and the the, the kind of relationship that god wants for us is one that will uh, support us getting closer to the Lord. Uh, and so those kinds of relationships, uh, desire those kind of relationships and look for those kind of relationships, you know, that you will have um, communication uh, with individuals that will help you get closer uh, to the Lord. Now, let's go to the third area, the third area, and that is the body. And so uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. And this is what was um, one of the ones that you were thinking about. Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. Remember, we have the big round circle. That's our human spirit. And when the hope, when we get saved and accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes in to our big spirit there. And he wants to fill it up. He wants to fill it up with knowledge of the Lord. He wants to fill it up with, with power. He wants to fill it up with authority. He wants to fill it up with peace and joy and love. All those, those things that come from God. And, um, and so it says here in verse 17, if any man defile, and I want to go back to that word defile. If any man or person defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it matters what you think on. It matters what you do. It matters what you watch. It matters what you say, hallelujah. And, and I wanna get down to this too. 
because I told Grace that I wanted to, to bring this in. It matters what you put in your mouth. It matters what you eat. I'm talking literally nutrition. I'm talking about, um, you know, I've heard people say this, uh, that we are what we eat. And so um, the Lord has put instructions in the word of God that about things that we are to put inside of us. And remember the body um, follows the spirit and follows the soul. And now let's go over to 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. <coughs> it says, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Hallelujah. What was that price? The blood of Jesus Christ bought you. You know, the, that was what the Lord said to me when one of the attempts that I tried to take my life, tried to commit suicide. He said to me, by the Spirit, it was like a person sitting right next to me. It was so strong. The voice was so strong. And he says, don't you know that you're not your own, that I bought you with my blood? That's exactly what he said to me. He said, pour out the water, pour out the pills and go home and do what I told you to do. And praise the name of Jesus. That's, that's what happened. I poured out the pills. I poured out the water and I drove back home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory. There's victory in Jesus. It says, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify in your body. Glorify who? Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are of God. Hallelujah. Now, I said I was going to go back to that word defile. And that word defile means to actually corrupt. And remember where we started in Matthew 21, where Jesus went into the temple and he began to overturn the tables and he began to um, tell the people to leave that were that were doing uh, illegal things according to the word. And that's exactly when we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our spirit man and into our soulish area and into our bodies and tell us what to eat and what not to eat and what how to exercise and how to keep this temple of God in being glorious, a glorious temple for the Lord uh, to work through. Hallelujah. Because see, the enemy, he's taking out people. We just learned last night as we did our Hispanic session that one of the apostles from Guatemala, he and his wife are in the hospital right now with COVID. And we were up in the night, Freddie was up in the night praying uh, for him. And we're believing for his life. We're believing, but there's been others. Well, I just got contact from a lady and her, said she and her mother had COVID and they had no money to, to do medicine or to go to the mm -hmm. hospital. They need to be in the hospital. Uh, we also have friends in uh, England that have COVID. The mother and the child have COVID. So there's so much yeah. uh, going on that we need to be dealing with spiritually, uh, getting our bodies uh, yes. in line yes. with what God wants us to do because there are people that need your help. There Amen. are people all Amen. over the world that need your help. You know, healing, healing is within us already. Healing is already in us. It was provided on the cross. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Hallelujah. So it's already in us. Healing is within us. But healing is going to come when you do what God tells you to do is, you know, get rid of the, the toxins. Hallelujah. In your spirit, man. 
in your in and by repenting by the word of God by the washing of the word in our soulless realm stay free of those soul ties that are toxic you know there are individuals that 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 um before I knew what the word said about it I would just listen to everything I would listen to everything and then I would get all burdened down with people's problems and praise the name of Jesus for freedom you know true freedom hallelujah overcoming those obstacles you know that lead to purpose I, I mean, that was an awesome message but I'm talking about healing right now and good nutrition is part of our healing taking care of your liver taking care of your kidneys taking care of 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 your 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 mind and your in your thinking and don't get overwhelmed hallelujah you know um someone said to me the other day oh i'm too blessed to be stressed you know and i thought to myself you know you know sometimes that's correct and sometimes you know you you call for all the things that are going wrong and so i'm telling you right now that as we get rid of these toxins because a toxin is a poison and so we do not want to defile the temple we do not want to um have things in our heart that didn't need to be there we don't want to to be thinking about things that are not of the of the word hallelujah and then our bodies will come in line hallelujah the arthritis will leave your body pain will leave your body i, I know for a fact medically uh medical research shows that rheumatoid arthritis is caused because of unforgiveness there are other diseases that are caused some cancers are caused by a root of bitterness that has attacked their lungs that is attacked and you say you know what that medical research look at some medical uh surveys and you will see our our such studies that show you that people can change and get rid of toxins by eating the right foods by doing the right kind of exercise and that's just the that's just the body part hallelujah uh that's not the the soulish area where you you get your your mind on the lord and you think on the lord and you and you think jesus all the time hallelujah you think about you know we used to wear those bracelets all the time what would jesus do well praise god that's real hallelujah you need to think well what would jesus do in this situation what would Jesus say in this situation? Well, it's all here in the in the word of God. And we can find our answer there. Praise the name of Jesus. And so that's what, what I have as far as getting rid of the of the toxins. And, and I want to get rid of, of the toxins in my life. And that's why, you know, I'm excited, a Grace, if if you if you take some classes and 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 just begin to to help people uh in in that area of uh of nutrition and 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 wellness i love that word wellness uh, because i believe it's of the lord that he wants us well he wants us he wants us to be mighty soldiers for him and how can we go out and be a warrior when you know we feel tired all the time are we are stressed out all the time? Are we have no energy and we have no uh, strength in us? Then, then we need to we need to be thinking about this and we need to be doing what Jesus wants us to do, so He can come back for a glorious church. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Does someone have questions or comments they would like to make? Uh, Sister Sherry, just now you said uh, sickness or disease started in the, uh, in the spirit and the cell. People may tend to think it's like a spiritual sickness or illness or soul uh, sickness or illness. But I, uh, I 
I, I know somebody like, like this, some cases like this. I have a friend who is a postdoctoral researcher at Harvard University, the medical school. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, 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 he uh, knows such a case. Uh, one mm -hmm. guy uh, who was very successful, a business person, and then had a car accident. And his uh, both arms were taken, taken off, the ambu uh, am amulated. And uh, mm. then uh, he suffered from terrible fight, uh, terrible pain. Like say, uh, oh, my fingers are, uh, are very, very painful. My elbow very, very painful and incredibly painful. And uh, clearly he, he, had, he had no arms at all, no fingers, no hands. Uh, yet he literally suffered from uh, from that pain. Uh, from, yeah, very, very ter terrible uh, pain. And it takes mm. something like a painkiller, painkiller, painkiller. And still like said, to such an extent that like he cried and cried. Mm. And then mm. it's, uh, it's life is kind of like a really distraught. Mm. Finally, he got the bankrupt. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, that we, means we, really sickness. Yes, yeah, can start it. It's in the memory in the arm, very deep, even physical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's a there's a root cause to everything. Uh, yes. don't, don't think things that they're just uh, coincidences, but they're right. root causes. And the Lord's told us to deal with root causes uh, to pray, and the only way you find out what the root causes are. And, and that goes back into the heart and what the people mm -hmm. are into their minds, what they're thinking about. So it, can, it may show up in the physical body, body, but yet there may be a root cause in the spirit or in the soulish realm. And so right. to be healed and to minister to people healing, then we need to know what the root cause is. Even if uh, uh, they got healed, uh, then if we didn't deal with the root cause, then they would go back and have the same uh, sickness uh, come back on them. Mm -hmm. So we have to know what the root cause is, and it's, it may not be in the body. It may be in the soul, or it may be in the heart. Yes, amen, amen. Well, I know that we normally let uh, let you say what you're going to take from this message, and, and again, we appreciate your being with us tonight. Um, uh, we do have our oldest son coming over to help Freddie in, in just a few minutes. And so trying to um, resolve an electrical issue here uh, that we're dealing yeah. with. Uh, but uh, well, I believe the Lord will show us what, what the problem is. Yes, and help us. And so, uh, Ruth, it's so good to have you with us tonight, and Benson, you too. And, um, and we appreciate I like today's information. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Wonderful. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, we're going to all get rid of the toxins and, uh, and so that we have that, that purity, uh, that the Lord is looking for. Amen. Amen. Uh, vessels of honor, vessels of honor. We love each one of you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Thank, you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B